Sam Lowe here for Green Blood Boxing. I'm delighted to be joined by Gavin Gwynn, the Welshman who will challenge Sean McComb for the Commonwealth Lightweight title, hopefully uh, as early as possibly February, but unfortunately the fight was due to fight was due to be held on the 22nd of January, but was postponed. Gav, how are you, mate? Yeah, I'm good, but uh, considering the circumstances, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good, yeah. Yeah, yeah, good man. Good to hear. I mean, obviously, let's let's kick it off with the unfortunate news that we got on Sunday that the, the British Boxing Board of Control have decided to postpone all, all fights and all events in the month of January. I mean, what was that like? I mean, obviously, before Christmas, you got the news. You've been training away, I presume, which means, you know, your Christmas was probably limited as to what you could do, what you could eat, etc. And then you get this news just after Christmas. How did you feel? Yeah, like um, that was the most like heartbreaking bit about it. Like, even like my missus, like we don't normally we'll go out and celebrate with friends and and family, but literally I I live like a monk when I'm in training camp, so I just didn't want to do anything. Like, so I just I had the the one day off. I had Christmas day off. We took my boy out to we we bought him a quad for Christmas. So well, you uh, know, Santa Santa brought him a quad, but um. <laughs> So we took him out. We took him out on the quad, yeah. and then um, had had some um, uh, Christmas dinner, and then that was it for me, really. Uh, that was my Christmas day. Like it was boring, but um, yeah. And then uh, just just had that phone call on Sunday, and uh, it was just like I was gutted more about like could have enjoyed my Christmas a bit more. But it is what it is, and th things like this happen, like. Obviously, you do during strange times now, so you just gotta you gotta take take it with a pinch of salt, really. This is it. It's, it's totally unfortunate, but as you kind of alluded to there before we started, you you said something that must be really reassuring as well that you're actually gym mates with obviously former as uh, former world champion Lee Selby. I mean, what kind yes. of advice did did Lee give you? What kind of maybe words of encouragement did he give you when when he got the news? Yeah, he just said like just don't go off the boil now. Just keep your head down because it's 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 only gonna probably put it back for a couple of weeks. So don't go eating what you want for a few days and put a yeah. stupid amount of weight on. Um, just yeah. stay professional. Like the the fight was gonna go ahead on the on the same date sort of thing. And um, obviously have a have a, like a rest day or whatever just in case it does go on for a bit bit longer. So what I did is I just had the the Sunday off. I had the Sunday off a diet as well. Yeah, uh, that that was the main thing, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I went straight back training then Monday and cracked on like as normal. And uh, I I done uh, yesterday. I done ten rounds of sparring and two rounds on the pad. So we just cracking mm. on as normal as we would do if we were fighting on the twenty second. So okay, perfect. And yeah. that's actually something that that kind of poses a question to me. Like, how how much does your training change if it does change at all? I mean, obviously you have no concrete date now. So do you taper yeah. it back a little bit? Do you kind of, do you do less sparring? Does it kind of get a, a little bit easier? So you just kind of tick over as to not kind of overtrain or how does it alter your training? I'm a, I'm a bit of a gym rat. Like I, I, I just want to do more and more and more like uh, yeah. in the gym, like Tony's always telling me, right, right, go on. Go and, uh, go and have a shower, go and get changed. Or, do you know what I mean? I just, I just, I just can't get enough of it. Do you know what I mean? So, with the sparring, I'm always I'm always doing eight and ten rounds anyway, so it's not it's, 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 I don't really taper off in in that fact. But um, yeah, we probably will do only only spar like once a week now until we got a definite date. Yeah, just doing pads and doing technical stuff. Obviously, my my weight is spot on, so I'm just going to keep my weight down, um, keep it in a reasonable um, weight, so I can just drop it if if. If I needed a fight this weekend, I could I could drop the weight like so. Well, okay, so you're like pretty much, you're pretty much bang on, already. Yeah, like um, well, not bang on, but like um, oh, obviously, oh, just a few pounds really. But um, on the Saturday, I was really low on the weight, and uh, yeah. Tony Tony told me he said, "Go on, just eat eat some carbs, get some red meat down now." And then, and then we had the we had the news then on the Sunday, so oh, it was just it was just cut in really. It's yeah. the best I've done the week. I don't know. I it's been flying off me this camp. I don't know. It's because I've been training harder, or I've just been dieting harder. I don't know what it is. Okay, 
So uh, it sounds like you're obviously always in the gym and maybe because you've you've obviously fought, well, you fought during this kind of at the back end of the summer, obviously against James Tennyson, which yeah. is something we will touch on, of course, um, especially um, myself being from Ireland with, and obviously the channel having some Irish interest as well. It's uh, something that we definitely yeah. want to kind of look at a little bit, but um, yeah, perhaps maybe you've, you've, you've obviously been, been taken away, but um, look, fair play to you because it can't be, it can't be easy to kind of be around that weight. It's not a very heavy weight and uh, you're not the smallest guy either. Like, no, nah, it's 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 hard. Um, I, I I'm I'm quite strict as well when it when it comes to the diet. Like I got a good I got a good um fiance. Like um she diets with me as well. So oh, definitely so makes it easier. It's, like it's no junk. Yeah, it's no junk food in the house. So the only junk food is if my boy he has a load of chocolate. He's got a sweet <laughs> tooth like me. Like but uh, yeah yeah she's she's really supporting in that way. Like so yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Great. That definitely makes life easier, I'd say. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, 100%. So, I mean, like, the first thing I want to talk about really is uh, I want to talk a little bit about your your opponent. Obviously, you're scheduled to fight, as we said, for the Commonwealth lightweight title. Um, coming yes. off the back of a loss for the British title against, obviously, James Tennyson, not a bad one for you coming in straight away against, uh, against of, co- of course, a good opponent and Sean, but for a good title as well. So, I mean... First of all, just generally, what do you know about Sean? And kind of, I'm interested in how you view Sean as an opponent, you know, especially kind of in comparison to, say, the two big names on your record who you fought, the likes of Joe Cardina and obviously James Tennyson. So when you, when you get that call from, from MTK to say, Sean McCown for the, for the Commonwealth title, what goes through your head? How do you, how do you view your chances in that fight? How do you view Sean as, as an opponent and as a challenge? Um, obviously, I had the phone call off my manager. Um, was it six, seven weeks ago now? So they give us plenty of time as well. Yeah. Uh, fair play to MTK, give us uh, loads of time. Um, uh, got off the phone to my manager. I said, I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll have a look at him. And um, me and Tony sat down, and uh, Tony said, Yeah, you got you got to beat into this boy. It's not, it's not going to be an easy fight. Yeah. Um, but you've got all the tools in the tools in the shed, sort of thing, to um, pull a, pull a win off, yeah. So, and then we got back to him and said, yeah, we'll uh, take the fight. And uh, I think I think I got off of the fight because obviously I lost to James Tennyson, but I, I myself personally, I thought I was winning the fight. I thought, okay. and I thought I was getting a foothold in the fight in the in the round before I got stopped. I backed him up. But he just got that. He's just got that punch power. It just changes a fight like instantly. Yeah, he, he does have. He does seem to have. I mean, obviously, you can tell us better than anyone, Gavin. But he does seem to yeah. have that kind of fight-ending power. Um, that if he hits any anyone on any given day, he can he can really rock them. To oh, the yeah, it's, it's, it's lights out for anyone. Um, uh, I was only saying to uh, one of the boys in the gym. I said. Um, all these top boys that you got like uh, Tiafimo Lopez, um, you have got Garcia just fought on the on the weekend. Yeah. Um, uh, Javante Davis. I, I I know he's probably not as technical as as any of them, but he's only got to land one shot and it's lights out. I'm I'm I've I've never been in the ring with someone who hits that hard. To be honest with you, I've been in really, middleweights. Yeah. Middleweights. Yeah. It's just I I thought he had a sledge in his arm at one point. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Yeah. That's not not that must not be. I mean, I can't imagine what what that's like to be to be in there and to get to hit get hit by a shot like that. I mean, what? Was, I mean, we're kind of going slightly off course here, but what what's that like when you get hit by a shot? Maybe before I, you even go down or whatever, you get hit by a certain type of power, and you're like, okay, this isn't good. Like this is this is this is a bad thing. What what can well, go through your head there? Well, I got I, to be honest with you. I got a quite good chin. Like I can take yeah. a good shot. Um, mm-hmm. I've been I've been all over the world sparring. I've been all over the world fighting. Um, I never got I never got dropped. I've got dropped in the amateurs once, but it was like a flash knockdown. Okay. I was like a, a slip as well with it. So when he hit me, I was thinking I've never felt anything like this before in my life. And I I was just thinking I could see stars, and my my Jeez. my my vision just went dark. It was like a grey color. But then I, I, so I took a knee, and as I took a knee, my vision started coming back, but it was blurry. I yeah. thought oh, I'd be sound now. Give, give myself. By the time I get up, give yeah. myself like a couple of seconds. It might hit me again. He might clear my vision, sort of thing. <laughs> but um, it is just phenomenal. The power he possesses is just. Uh, it was. I got. I got a bit of a 
big I got like big balls as well. So I I I won't go down for no reason. Like so, yeah. Um, I I I thought I'd go down and give myself the best possible chance of recovering and like surviving the round because it was like quite early on in the round as well. But um, it was he just had he's a good finisher. He's um he's yeah. stopped like twenty six opponents and he so. Yeah, he's a very clinical finisher. He's uh, yeah. he kind of has. A, I feel like James has a little bit of an underrated um, attack as well. Like he has quite a varied attack. I feel like he's he's quite good at he's he's quite good at getting to that fin- land. He's try sorry, get me words together. He's good <laughs> at getting to the kind of finishing punch. You know, he's not just winging at your head. He throws some into the body. He changes up a little bit the angles and then yeah, he, he's good at he mixes his shots up well, really yeah. well. Like. Um, Inside as well, he doesn't just load up his shots inside. He'll he'll tip tap down to the body, tap on the arm, and then he come up with the uppercuts and then come over the top. But I was taking him, I was taking on my foot right. I got I've I've rid the storm and I start. I can remember I started backing him up. I thought right, I got a foot all good now. Yeah. But then he come out and he's he started even better. I was just like, oh my god, what have they given him in the corner over there? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, like, we're on that subject now, so we might as well continue with it because it is something I wanted to touch on anyway. I mean, what yeah. what do you think the difference was on the night? Would you put it down to, like, just power, like, just just that kind of fight end and power from James? Or what do you think the difference is? And, of course, you had a, a loss against Joe Cardina as well, which I was actually at that fight. And um, it was a kind of a different, a, a completely different fight, a different kind of fight. Cardina, obviously, not really a big power puncher. Um, you yeah. took everything he had to offer all night. And kept coming, but obviously it was just a different stylistically a different fight. But even just to, to go to back to the Tennyson fight straight away, what what do you think the difference was on the night between you and Tennyson and not being able to, yeah, to get over the line I there? Think, um I just think it was the just the power really. Um because okay. my skill set, I thought I was I was too good for him. I was beating him to the jab. Um and I was boxing and moving lovely and I was getting my shots off. It was just uh Every time he he was hitting and landing, he was just doing damage. Like um, yeah. if you see my face after it, like someone, well, it looked like someone had been hitting me with a shovel for about five hours. Like, <laughs> yeah, which yeah is, it was, it's not what you want, is it? Um, yeah, no, it's crazy. It's crazy. Like going, like you said, um, the the Cordina fight. It was like more of a, it was like a, a skill set fight, yeah. like. Joe's not a massive puncher. Obviously, he got enough power to to give you um, give him respect, but it wasn't like devastating power where I knew I could I could drop my hands and get caught and I wasn't going to get hurt, sort of thing. Yeah. So I was throwing you- more shots. Um, whereas with tennis, and I wasn't letting my hands go inside because I knew if if my hands were down and I get caught, I, it'd be lights out, like sort of thing. Yeah, you don't want to create gaps for him. As yeah, you don't want to give him ch- like opportunities to land as such. Yeah, yeah. no, hundred percent. So, what do you think the difference was there between with Cordina? Just as, again, as we're kind of on that, because they're obviously the two big names that you fought. They're the names that people know. I mean, is it was it just the kind of the slick kind of skills of of Cordina? Yeah, like I personally thought that wasn't that wasn't a wide, like some of the scorecards are. It's like six rounds, like. Mm to him like when I watched it back it, some of the rounds obviously he's a matchroom fighter so he's going to get up and he but so some of the rounds are close close and it could have gone either way like so I personally thought it was only about two or three rounds in it and I thought the the, the later on in the fight I was winning the rounds later on I thought you came back into the fight later on for yeah. sure it was a really good fight to watch actually Um, especially yeah. like live because obviously you, you definitely come, come to fight Um. But I like I personally wouldn't have known you at that stage, but was kind of pleasantly surprised. It was a, it was a yeah. very good fight, and you definitely came on strong, at, as you say, in that kind of second half when he had to kind of keep dealing with you as you as you kept pressing him as well. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, it was a uh, sometimes hard to score from when you're in the crowd, but um, but it was a good fight, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, it was it was a good fight to be involved with. Like it was a. A massive event on being on the exactly. undercard of a Lomachenko, like so. It was like yeah. not many people can say that, and the old two and the sold out arena, like so. Yeah, like that's it's one for the one for the both. Obviously, it's like, getting not like, coming away with a win, like. But um, I just I, I took loads of positives from it. Like um, Eddie and had me straight back on one of his shows. 
Um, yeah. Obviously, we were supposed to box in Cardiff against tennis, and I think that would have given me a bit more... I don't know. I think that, that would have given me an extra boost if it happened in, in Cardiff, but mm-hmm. it is what it is. Done, yeah. done now, isn't it? Yeah. It's unfortunate. The home crowd is always going to boost you a little bit, isn't it? I mean, it's Yeah, logical. yeah, definitely. And I think from from places like, especially places like Wales or uh, like Ireland, Northern Ireland, Dublin, even Scotland, places in Scotland like Glasgow, it's kind of it. It feels a little bit different sometimes. It's much more raucous. Yeah. Like these kind of areas really do get behind their fighters, and uh, and really do make a lot. Like a small amount of people can make an awful lot of noise for uh, for their local fighters. But one hundred percent, man. Well, I want to kind of touch back on Sean as well because it's obviously the yeah, upcoming yeah. fight. It is going to happen. Um, hopefully yeah. sooner rather than later as well. But let's go a little. Let's touch a little bit on it. Like, have you what you've kind of alluded to a little bit? But have you have you watched much of them? And kind of how do you see how do you see the fight going? What are your like you know without giving too much away? Kind of how do you think you have to go about the fight in order to get a victory? Obviously, Sean, quite a, a, as you said, decorated amateur, kind of slick, yeah. very good technician. So, what how do you see the fight going? Yeah, it's going to be like I think it's going to be a chess match. Uh, if I'm honest. Okay. Obviously, he's tall, exactly like me. Um, yeah. He don't like to mix it on the inside. I've noticed he don't. He he seems comfortable in there, but he don't seem to don't seem to throw a lot of shots inside. But he's like you can see with the amateur pedigree, like he he throws his shots well from the outside. He's not like he keeps you off balance, trying yeah. to turn you off the rocks and everything. Obviously, being the self boys. It's, it's a lot harder for like me to get inside sort of thing, but um, yeah, it's uh, I don't I don't want to say too much obviously because uh, I don't want to be yeah. giving the game plan away, but yeah, just um, I think the the first couple of rounds are going to be tight, and then I think I'm going to take over in the second half of the fight. Yeah. Okay. I always I, I always find it interesting, and obviously every every fighter has to be has to be like super confident in going into the fight that they're going to win. But I'm going to, like, I spoke to Sean the other day, and one thing he said, which I want to see what, what you feel about this, he said, tactically and technically, you're nowhere near as good as him. So I, he feels like he's, from a technical perspective, kind of ahead of you. So, how, how, like, what, what's that? What do you think when you hear that? You know, Sean McComb, 11-0, and 0, reasonably un, unproven at the moment as a pro, yes. fought some good fighters, but no names as of yet. Like, what, what do you think? What, how did how uh, yeah. that react in your head? Well, he probably got people smoking, blowing smoke up his own ass, haven't he? So to, to come up with a statement like that, like um, obviously on the night he's gonna be he's gonna be feeling some pain if he thinks that. Like, do you know what I mean? I uh, I really he shouldn't. Have, he, that's just disrespectful, really, to myself. Okay. Do you yeah, think that? I, I I I'm not. It's not as no. I'm not getting like piped up about it, but it's just. You don't go saying that about someone. You, this is first, really, um, first challenge. Like okay. all the other boys, he's boxed. The losers, really. They haven't, they haven't won anything. They haven't done anything. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, you're, like I 100% com- uh, understand where you're coming from. So do you think that maybe because people have seen you on the big stage, but unfortunately in those in those the, those two biggest fights that you've had, you've, you've come away, you, you've all unfortunately lost those fights, do you think people maybe underrate your your skills and what you bring to the table, especially from a skill set perspective? Do you think that's a, a big thing here? Yeah, hundred percent. Because obviously they've they've only seen me in fights where the the fights I've been in with are like world class opponents. They're not like British title level opponents. Mm. Do you know what I mean? They 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 are, they they are on the cusp of European level, verge like world level, like James is. Just won a world title limited straight off the back of beating me. Yeah. So, and he knocked the number eight out in uh, number eight in the WBA, was it? Yeah. In like a, a minute, like, and that just goes to show yeah. how well I done against him, really. Definitely. I mean, I think Josh O'Reilly, uh, slightly dubious ranking, you know, of number eight in the WBA. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not, say- I'm not saying no different, but. Yeah, like, but, it's, but he's still, he's clinical still, he's still yeah. He's still ranked number eight, didn't he? Do you know what I mean? No, one hundred percent. No, yeah, no. You have to, you have to give him that as well. Um, but yeah, <laughs> would it be a would it be a fight that you would take, Josh O'Reilly? Oh yeah, hundred percent. I'd probably knock him out in uh, two rounds, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
uh, let's 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 get let's petition for it. <laughs> well, you've got you've got to take care of Sean McCown first of all. Yeah, that's um, uh, obviously a, a, a very difficult fight, and um, you know, a, a fighter who who the the channel here obviously Greenbow Boxing has a lot of interest in the likes of Sean McCown being a, an Irishman. Um, but you know what? It's a, a matchup that when I saw the matchup, I thought that's a that's a tidy matchup. That's really nice fight. I think because from Sean's perspective, it's a it's a step up for him. Um, yeah. And obviously for you, you fought fighters who are ahead of him in the pecking order, but still, it's it's kind of a pick em to an extent because we've we've seen you fight some good fighters, but obviously not come out on top in those fight in those fights. We've seen Sean fight some some half decent opponents, but he's making that kind of step up now. So it's kind of it's a little bit it's a middle it's a hard to explain, but you know what I mean. It's kind of a I suppose yeah. it feels like a bit yeah, of a like, 50 um, encounter. Uh, like I, I've already boxed and beaten boys and 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 beat them. Like I beat the English. Myron Mills, yeah, and, yeah, I, and he's rated highly, and I I well I beat him pretty easy in the end. Yeah. So and that was only over ten rounds. I think if it was over twelve rounds, I think I would have stopped him. Okay. It'd be interesting. It's not he's unfortunately not a fighter that I would be too familiar with. I am familiar with him from your no, record. Not, not too familiar. But um no, but you know what? It's gonna I think it's gonna be a cracking fight no matter what. And it's like a good it's a it's a good gauge for either man, whoever comes out on top, it's a very good like name to get on the record. You know what I mean? I think it works both ways for both of you. So it's a so fair play for actually taking that fight because I think it's a yeah, but like I put a status up the other day. I just like you know these old school fighters. I just like the way they went about their business. Like they wouldn't say no to a fight. They didn't pick their way through, like trying to get their way through to the easiest shot of a title. I'll fight any man. Like I'm, I'm not scared who I fight. Um, I'll just, I'll fight anyone. That's like, just, I, I know people will um, remember me by like they, they knew as Gavin will just box anyone, no matter what their records is. He'll box anyone. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, hundred percent. And that's like we loved. We obviously loved those kind of throwback fighters who will put themselves in like against anyone. But the, is there like a line to be drawn between kind of fighting anyone, kind of even at, at maybe at short notice or but just any kind of any kind of level of fighter, and then maybe that line between that attitude and maybe what's from say from a, like a journeyman perspective, like what's right for your career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like obviously, um, I would I wouldn't take a fight like two weeks notice or okay. like I got offered a fight. I got offered a fight again uh, in the bubble uh, just before we we announced this fight. Okay. And it was like a week. It was like a week's notice, and my my weight was fine. Um, but I just I said, what's what, what's the point? Uh, we're not we're not looking for like six and eight rounders. We're at that level now. We just want to be fighting for titles. I don't want to be fighting six and eight rounds. That's that's what that's what I mean when I'll fight anyone. I'll like anyone with a title. I'll fight them. I don't care yeah. who it is. I I I know I proved I'm proved I'm British level worthy. Do you know what I mean? I, I box people who's have gone past that easy and I, I've I've done well against them so I proved that I can win the British title and the Commonwealth title do you yeah. know what I mean I get you can you uh, give us any any indication as to who, who you were offered to fight against Um, I, I can't remember his name he was um, I don't think he was that good to be honest with you I think I would have been in the home corner as well but I okay. just didn't want I just didn't want to go back down the road of fighting six and eight rounders like I just, okay. I just I, like I like fighting the longer fights. I'd rather fifteen rounds if I'm honest. With you. <laughs> I would like I just I it takes me like two or three rounds and then I'm 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 in the fight then and then I start start to go and then by the time the twelfth round come I know like my Tony always says to me well you should throw more shots but it's just like the, the way I don't know it's just, it maybe the way I train or I just want to do more. Like, it's yeah, not often it's, that yes. you hear that like that I want to do 15 rounds. Yeah, like I, I can remember after the Cordina fight, um, um we didn't stop throwing in that fight. And uh Tony at the, the end of the 11th round, he said, You were right, you've got NG. I said, Yeah, you can go all day. Just <laughs> just wanted to keep on going. <laughs> I suppose it must be like the pace that you train at, you just that's what you do when you when you yeah, spar when you train. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, train hard, and then the fights are obviously easier. But 
I, I'd wish you they would obviously bring the 15 rounds back in. I don't. <laughs> it suit me better. Ah, uh, madman. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't do. I couldn't even do one round. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'll tell you what I do want to do. I want to, uh, we've kind of touched on like all a lot of the, the stuff I wanted to talk about, but yeah, did you watch Garcia Campbell last weekend? Um, interesting fight. What did you think of it? I was a little bit surprised myself about the outcome. What did you think? Yeah, I did watch it. I watched it the next day, really. Um, uh, I, 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 I picked Campbell to, to beat him on points, I did, right? Um, on the Saturday, I just thought he'd be too much skill set. I am boxed anyone decent, Garcia, and I just thought he's not going to let him in to let him big shots go. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. He just seemed on the offensive from the off. He didn't want to engage. He was like scared. I don't know what, what if it was his power. If he do does have real power, that. Um, but I don't think that was the best, Luke Campbell. I think all these years uh, at boxing at elite level now is starting to catch up with him, if I'm honest. Yeah. So, like, yeah, because what did you think of, like, the game plan or his, his performance in general? It, it did seem a bit off. Like, it, it looked like he kind of it was a bit one-dimensional or something. Like, he was looking for that left hand with power, but it didn't seem to be an awful lot more. Like, what did you think yeah. of the game plan like, or how he, how he performed? Like, he, he dropped him with that one shot and he just let him off the hook. I and mean, that's... It's just like we should have just jumped on him by the end, tried tried to finish the job, sort of thing. When yeah. you got him stumbled, but I don't know, I don't know where they, I don't know where he goes from there either. Yeah, that like, seems. Does to be he want to be going things. back down to to the lower levels? But I would I obviously he's probably made enough money now where he can retire and live comfortable. But it's that dream is probably is is in him now. He wants to win a world title, but. It's probably one of the hardest titles to win in the world now at lightweight. It's just a ridiculous division. Like the the, the top four, five, six, seven. You could keep going all I day. Might, you know? I might move down to super further. I might. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the way forward, like those top four or five. I mean, the top the four American lads and Lomachenko. I mean, it's it's just yeah. it's four of the best fighters debatably around at the moment like I, I think Lomachenko is too small for that weight as well yeah um, I seen I seen him up in London like the, he's he's not a big geezer I think he'd make super fair that quite comfortable as well oh definitely yeah yeah, yeah. I think he's I, I don't think he has any problems to make super fair he could probably make fetter again if he really wanted to yeah. but he's probably yeah. past it now a little bit in his head but does he could definitely make super fair I mean doesn't yeah, oh there's yeah no yeah easy and um, win a world title probably in his first fight back Oh yeah, definitely. Do you think that um, Lomachenko has been kind of over, or he's been kind of looked over now, as in he's kind of been written off? Past is this. the term I was looking for? Huh? Yeah, like past this sort of thing. No, no chance. Um, no chance. Uh, yeah. What's his name? Um, oh, forget his name. Uh, Who? Tia, Who lost Tia it? Fimo, yeah, Tiafimo Lopez. Can I can never say it? Tiafimo Lopez. That's the one. <laughs> Um, uh, he's just he's just young. He's quite big as well. He's quite big for the weight and strong. Uh, yeah. I think I think that had a, had a lot to do with the with the fight. But he just outboxed him as well and just done what people said that he couldn't do. Really, yeah. outboxed him at his own and and beat him at his own game. Do you think there was an element of of Lomachenko underperforming in that fight and not not like he looked to me like. He wasn't himself. Like he looked at me, like he was waiting very long to to get started, um, and it didn't look um, to me like Lopez was doing anything to stop Lomachenko from doing what he normally did. Or did you see it completely different? No, nah, no, nah, exactly the same. Like the first like four or five rounds was it? I don't think he threw many shots, did he? He was like yeah, he slipping, taking them on the gloves, and I was thinking, what's he doing? He's just throwing these rounds away, like. Yeah, exactly. He was just losing the rounds because Lopez landed a couple of shots, kind of dictated with and a norm- jab. And normally he's flicking his jab up, moving to the side and throwing just, not tap, tapping shots, but just no scoring shots. If, if No power shots, just scoring shots normally. But he just did, didn't have no spark in him, did he, really? It was strange, wasn't it? And then he kind of, it's almost like he burst into life in the last kind of four odd rounds and he kind of realised, oh, like, shit, I have to do something here. 
And then all yeah, of a sudden, it was like the normal Lomachenko, maybe bar the 12th round that kind of stood toe to toe. And yeah. probably Teofimo Lopez probably nicked the last round. But like, yeah. it was it was a strange one, wasn't it? And that's why, but he went in for shoulder surgery like a day later as well. And I'm kind of looking at it going, you're hearing all these rumors that he was he was asked not to take the fight. His dad didn't want him to fight, etc. And I'm thinking, oh, and I think a lot of people are kind of writing, writing him off a little bit, like as if he's past it. I don't um, think so. Would would you go into a fight knowing, like, um, obviously all them belts? Would you know knowing that you got a massive injury? Obviously, especially being on your shoulder as well. Yeah. Um, Perhaps not. You don't think so? But maybe he got maybe he got pushed into it. But you don't know, do you? Yeah, it's hard to know if you're not in the if you're not in the circle. You can't really know, can we? So it's nah, just speculation. Nah. But it's interesting yeah, to talk about anyway. But um, yeah, yeah, I would. Uh, I, I'll tell you what. One thing I would like to see a rematch because I think. Uh, yeah, I think I do think he would win the rematch, Lomachenko. But uh, Lopez is on about moving up to uh, ten stone, and he. Yeah, I have heard him say that. Maybe one or two more. Or, I, I, I mean, would I he see, I can't see him being the likes of um, Josh Taylor, though. I think Josh Taylor, just school him, really. Josh Might not is stop him, but yeah. school him. But he's too big at 10 stone. Like, yeah. I think t- Taylor's skill set is uh, is kind of next level. Like He's definitely one of the best skill set fighters in the world. Yeah, but um, it'd yeah. be an interesting fight though because Lopez is definitely definitely very technical himself. Like, but now um, I tell you what, big fight if that was to happen, big fight for Josh as well. Yeah, worthwhile, like, like worth his while staying in staying at super lightweight for that fight. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Like um, that that'd be like a Las Vegas fight. That would hopefully when the crowds are back. Um, yeah. maybe the end of next year, like sort of thing. Uh, maybe the end of this year, sort of thing. 100%. Look, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give you one, one more question, Gav, and it's just a little bit more about, about yourself. Like, I mean, all going well for you. You you win this fight against Sean McComb. Um, where do you see yourself going after that? Like, where do you, what kind of route do you see yourself going down? Is there any opponents that you've kind of have in mind? Any titles you have in mind? You know, how do you see it going after that? Um, that's all that's on my mind really now is just win this fight. Um, win this fight. Um, get that done, get the job done. A um, couple of weeks off, and then I, I, I need that British title. I need that British title. Oh, my. Third time trying, I, I need it. Like I need yeah. that title. <laughs> so the British title is if uh, all going well, you're obviously confident that you're going to win this fight, and the British title is yes. kind of in your, in your, uh, in your vision for the hopefully as soon as possible. Straight away, I take it straight away. So win this fight now and then take it straight away. I, I, I think. Um, it's another fight, uh, Irish fighters fighting. Uh, who's he fighting? He's fought, fighting uh, one of the Walshers, is he? Uh, Paul Highland Jr. is scheduled to fight oh. Liam Walsh, I believe. Um, I think it could be for the lightweight title, the British title, is it? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's so fight. I'd, I'd fight either one of them, win this now, um, whenever the date is, um, yeah. hopefully soon. Um, Maybe two days off the gym and then straight back in the gym and uh, fight the winner. Straight back in. Listen, yeah. I tell you what, Gav, no matter what happens, um, we look forward to seeing you and I look forward to the fight with Sean McComb. It's going to be a cracker, absolutely no doubt. Thank you so much for your time, mate. I really appreciate it and I hope we can catch up again sometime and uh, maybe perhaps after or even before the fight, depending on uh, when it gets yeah. announced. This is Sam Log here for Green Blood Boxing, joined today by Gavin Gwynn. So I'm absolutely... Delighted to have you, man. Thanks very much and hopefully talk to you soon. Thank you very much for having me on. Really appreciate it. Thank you.